who saw the same way I did to uh, this year, in fact last this week you didn't remember, but <laughs> sixty-five years ago we started our dating. And uh, in November of nineteen forty nine we were married. So he's a fast worker. <laughs> and uh, then we came to Calvary Bible School uh, Church, and that was another milestone in our life. It was called Community Church then, and one of our pastors, Pastor Foss, said, that doesn't say anything about your church, what it believes. So he said, I think you should change it to Calvary Bible or something there. So everybody knows you're teaching the Bible. And so this church, in all these years, has been faithful to teaching the Word of God and supporting missions, and I think that's the theme of our life. And um, as far as my father, he was a very quiet man. He didn't say much. He's a hard worker, not with his hands. Well, with his hands. How many know what a fountain pen repairman does? <laughs> he supported a family of four children repairing fountain pens. And he was a very quiet, didn't say much, and it took me years just before he died. He said, I pray every night for that. Uh, these past few years have been a little rough with cross, with cancer, and other problems. But altogether, we've still stuck with the word of God and depending upon the Lord to support us. And this church family, <clears throat> this church family has been very important to us. Come sick or thin, we're going to stay here. This is our home. Thank you. Great this. <laughs> <laughs> this is the third time this week I've been asked to give some sort of a testimony about somebody else or myself. Uh, we had a funeral service here this week. Some of you know and I was asked to speak on behalf of Brent Bowen. But Brent Bowen didn't want me to talk about him. He wanted me to talk about his Lord. And that's what I'd like to say in my testimony. I don't want to talk about me. I was born in 1927. And, uh, but in 1937 is when we took that song that you guys to say, I saw the light. And I'd been to an evangelistic service. My mother would drag us when there was an evangelist in Washington. I was born and raised in Washington. <coughs> and an old tent they had in downtown Washington somewhere. The guy's name was Happy Mac, Walter McDonald. He was the evangelist. And he had been a comedian at one time in his life, and that kind of interested in me. But he'd give an altar call, and I'd be standing in the back or sitting about midway back. They had chairs, just folding chairs. And I'd stand up in chairs when he'd give an altar call, and I'd grab onto the one in front of me. And I told him, Mother's nudging me like this to go on up and and make a decision. And it didn't happen that night. We went the second night. My brother and sister and I were all there. And uh, it didn't happen that night. And finally, the third night after it didn't happen, we went home that night. And my brother and I, was always our habit, we had slept in a back, back bedroom upstairs. And the mother said, come here, you guys. And she brought us in. She said, I want you to kneel down beside the bed. And mother, that night after here, we'd been fighting it for two or three nights. She finally said, let's ask the Lord to come into your hearts. And my brother and I both did it. My mother was leading me. And some of you may have known my mother if you've been here a long time. And she was a real soul winner. She went and led a lot of souls to the Lord to help start this church, in fact. And uh, she did lead. And eventually, we were talking about fathers. My father was not a Christian. Uh, what we would call a Christian. He was raised in Guatemala. And of course, the predominant faith there was Roman Catholic. And in fact, the Catholic priest taught him to play the violin and taught him so well, he obviously had talent that I don't have. And he played for the president of Guatemala, the president of Mexico. And they thought it was so good, they sent him to this country. And he started the National Symphony Orchestra and played for four presidents as a solo violinist of this country. And with him playing one night, I got to meet President Roosevelt and Mrs. Roosevelt in the White House. Uh, but I don't want to talk about him because he wasn't the spiritual leader of my family. My mother was. And uh, in fact, I don't even want to talk about me. I want to talk about the one that saved me, the Lord Jesus.
Jesus Christ that came into my heart. Because if you have anything to brag about, don't brag about your soul. Brag about the one who saved you. And I hope you can say amen to that because that's, that's the one you need to boast about is the Savior who gave his life for us. And that's what I wanted to talk about when I talked about Brent. Brent didn't want me to tell you what a good guy he was. He wanted me to tell you what the Lord had meant to him. That young man died. Well, he wasn't young, he was younger than me, though. But uh, anybody's young and younger than me. Uh, he uh, he was, just gave his life to the Lord. He gave up his fishing and crabbing and boats and everything he loves to do and went to Bible college uh, at the urgence of one of our pastors. And that same pastor urged me to go to Bible college. And uh, so I did that because the Sunday school class I was teaching here, these kids, these teenagers, and a lot of you are here, you teenagers, you guys knew more about the Bible than I did. So I said, I better get up on them. And, uh, so I went to Bible college. Paid my own way because it didn't have any GI Bill, even though I'd been in through World War II. But uh, paid my own way to Bible college and learned a lot about the Lord. And was able to come back here and teach these kids and later on teach an adult class. But then again, I don't want to talk about I want to talk about what the Lord wrote to me. And I brought my little Bible here. Let me show you this thing. A friend gave it to me, this little thing. And I said, if you can get this little Bible, the Lord to print, but you can't get a Bible, this is the full King James Version, Old and New Testament, but it's not large print. And I looked up the verse, one of my theme verses in my life is John 10.10. 10. And it goes like this, the thief comes forth with the steal, kill, and destroy. And the Lord said to his disciples, I am come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. And that's what I think we need to have as Christians. If you're a born again Christian, you should be having an abundant life. That doesn't mean you're wealthy. That means you've got an abundant life that Christ is in your heart. And each of these songs we sang here in such perfect order. I saw the light. We sang Blessed Assurance. And we sang all these wonderful hymns that show that after you've seen the light, then you start to grow. And your life, it should be. And I hope you can say amen to that. That your life is growing spiritually. Uh, I, I've often thought, I taught once in our Sunday school class, don't ever come to church and leave the same way that you came. You should, not that doesn't mean you go out the same door at all. You can go out the same door, but you should never leave the same way you came in. You should have something more in your heart that, that the Lord has given you that day in church than, uh, than when you came. And that's what it means in the Old Testament story, is when they came to the church, they didn't even leave by the same door. They left another way to symbolize the fact that they learned something more. And I hope that that's what each one of you would do. And uh, I'm just thankful for what God has done for me. He's given me that more abundant life. I've had five different kinds of cancer. still got a couple of them in there. But uh, you don't die of them. You die with them. I hope that's what it'll be. But I'm very thankful for the abundant life he's given me. It had not been in wealth, but it's been in spiritual things. And I hope I can, I'm enjoying every one of you as spiritual brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's my testimony that you would have the same life, an abundant life in Christ. Look at John 10.10 10 sometime and make that one of your key verses. I love that verse in the time I was a kid. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I took so much time. <laughs> Doing the right things for our children, raising our children and being good, godly husbands.